Protests have swept across the Front Range this year as students at the University of Denver staged a sit-in and were subsequently expelled from school. And a dry cleaners riot broke out in September in Denver's Five Points neighborhood. Meanwhile, the University of Colorado Athletic Department and the Denver Police Department are facing accusations of racial bias in their programs. Gerald, let's start with you on this one. Uh, to what account should uh, the city of Denver be held to in handling riots that are now striking here in Denver? Well, I'd say at the University of Denver protest where 40 students did a, a sit-in and wouldn't leave the registrar's office uh, because they were protesting that graduate students aren't allowed on the student government, and maybe they've got a, a point about that, but a, a sit-in in somebody's office is not a, a good way to advance that. I think the police handled it well, and most students at DU actually supported, uh, at least opposed the, the method that the, uh, the students were using. Up at the University of Colorado, they're protesting that the, the men want unlimited visits uh, with no restrictions in the women's dorms. You, you can at least understand the, uh, why men of any, any, every generation would be, would be in favor of that. But, I think we should focus on the more important issue, which is the Denver Public Schools. Uh, this year, the uh, Rachel Noel on the Denver School Board introduced a motion to uh, move forward on integration of the schools, and that was defeated 7-2. Denver has never had school segregation in a formal sense, but what we all know is that the school board has historically drawn attendance boundaries and built schools in particular locations so they can keep those schools uh, mostly segregated. You, you build one school in the black neighborhood, one in the white neighborhood, rather than say two schools in between where you could draw from a mixture of people. And I, I think it's, we need, uh, we need to change the school board and we need to get this reform going soon because frankly if we don't, uh, somebody's going to bring a federal court case and the school board could lose it and then we'd end up with things like uh, federal court supervision of the schools and, and forced busing, which would be very unpopular and disruptive. A federal court case, that's, that's hard to imagine, but I understand your point. Al, you cover the police here in Denver. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what do you make of the accusations of racial bias within the ranks? Well, I think uh, Mayor Kurrigan, who you know recently announced he's going to resign at the end of the year because he doesn't make enough money, the taxpayers turn down his pay raise, uh, and he's got to send kids to college. But I think Kurrigan did a good thing. He, he really is responsible, I think, uh, Florence, I want to tell you. Uh, our mayor is responsible for keeping things calm while the rest cities in the rest of the country have been have had a lot of trouble uh, former chief dill last year as you know the uh, the the charges of police brutality during the disturbances up in, in at the shopping center up mm -hmm. in northeast denver uh, he replaced dill and dill was very popular and a very good friend of kurrigan but friendship only went so far to keep order in this city uh, the mayor fired harold last year and he put in george seaton seaton's had about a year now and he's done a very good job. I think he's responsible for it. I just want to comment a little bit on what Mr. Copel had to say. And he's absolutely right, but he didn't get to the, the punchline. And the punchline is that this city doesn't necessarily have segregated schools, but it has segregated neighborhoods. This is a different city north of Alameda and south of Alameda. And where the school board decides to build those schools and draw those boundaries results in segregated schools. Park Hill is, is approaching it right. They're approaching it right. And that we need to have integrated neighborhoods throughout Denver that would integrate the neighborhood schools because we have to keep schools in the neighborhood to have strong neighborhoods. Florence, what do our viewers need to know about the dry cleaner riots in the Five Points neighborhood in Denver that may not have made uh, headlines already? That's a great question, Mr. Cherry, but first let me, let me uh, respond to um, Al's comments here about Mayor Kurgan. Um, um, keeping the waters uh, calm in Denver. This is the same police department, the same police department that raided the home and vandalized the home of uh, Denver Black Panther, Panther Party member Lauren Watson. This is the same police department, okay? This is the same police department that brutally broke up an uprising that happened in Five Points after a eight-year-old young Afro-American boy bleeding, tried to seek help at Gregory's Dry Cleaners store. The owners, the white owner's son came out with a bat and threatened the boy and finally threw cleaning fluid on him. When the black community rose up in anger, this was the Denver Police Department that dispersed this crowd, 
hurting, hurting tens of innocent bystanders. So I'm not too impressed. Okay, this, this, this may not be Mississippi, it may not be Chicago, right. but I'm not too impressed with the Denver police force. Did you have another question, Mr. Terry? No, in fact, I wanted to involve uh, Molly in the conversation. Molly, you have your finger on the pulse of the uh, personality and the, uh, the mood in Denver. Do you think Denver is a powder keg of a city like other cities that we've seen out east? It is not as bad, certainly, as other cities, but there is no question that the Denver police are approaching earning the same pig label that we are seeing around the country. It is not just their abysmal behavior in Five Points, but we have the family dog, a interesting place where kids are going to hear the music now. Generally, they're very well behaved. Al, I think you've heard about some of this. They've gone undercover. Mm -hmm. They've busted those kids. They have followed them. The kids are just out having a good time. There are other bad characters around town. We have two acid labs that just got busted. But let the kids go hear their music. Let them protest peacefully at the schools. As long as the protests are peaceful, people need to be heard. And now a word from our sponsor. Hey folks, if you're in the market for a new car, why not visit the fine folks at Fred Vaughn's Ramblerville at 5600 South Broadway, the sponsors of Colorado Inside Out. You can see the exciting new AMX all the pony cars are so frightened of. Maybe all the power is not what you're looking for. Well, right now, if you buy a Rambler American, Rebel, or Ambassador, you'll take home a free Kelvinator freezer. That's right. Buy a car and get a fabulous Kelvinator freezer absolutely free of charge. Tell Fred's people you heard about it right here on KBDI.